Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on wherever you are. And I hope you are doing well and having a great time. We appreciate your presence for this event and we hope it will be very interesting and exciting. Uh, in today's workshop, uh, we will be talking about how to create a smart contract uh, using chain IDE and analyze it using footprint analytics. This is Ali, our CS community manager at chain IDE. And some of you may already know me. So I will be discussing about how to create a smart contract uh, using chain IDE. And we have an other friend from footprint analytics, Mr. Boris, and he will be telling us how to use footprint analytics, how to choose a Web3 data provider, and why we need to use footprint analytics. And we have incentive for the developers who joined us for the today's workshop. We have a link in the video description. If they register using the link given in the video description, they can get a seven day free trial for the footprint analytics. So without wasting time anymore, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Boris uh, to discuss about footprint analytics and how to choose Web3 data provider. Hello, Mr. Boris, how are you doing? Hey Ali, thanks a lot for the invitation. Anticipating a great talk, a great discussion, and a great contribution to the community. How about you? Yeah, I am doing well, and thanks for being with us. Hope to have a great session today. Yeah, so shall I start? Yeah, sure. All right, cool. Um, hey everybody, my name is Boris, and uh, um, the name of the workshop that I'm going to be covering today is how to choose a data provider for your web free project. And uh, uh, yes, I'm going to be uh, telling, yeah, for instance, you, you could be working on an NFT gallery, a game five project, but at the end of the day, you have to, I guess, eventually work with some uh, blockchain data, whether it's like historical or probably something that's just uh, being just appeared on blockchain. And uh, yeah, I think we're building a great tool to help you with it and uh, like drastically simplify uh the development for you so uh here's a bit about the contents that i'm going to be touching upon today so uh, i'm going to be doing a small introduction to indexes uh i'm also going to be uh, talking about the things to consider uh before like coming up with your infrastructure solution to that that will allow you to handle the data then we're going to be going through some common indexer pipelines uh so basically the things that every indexer uh does and uh, yeah supposed to do and uh, uh finally we're going to be talking about why database is a service slash why footprint uh so let us yeah um talk about the things to consider when you're um planning to start working with uh, uh on-chain data or basically actually like any data whether it's uh it could be off-chain as well so uh your solution, yeah, should meet the specific needs uh, and goals uh, so that it like makes sense and covers your like business case, business scenario. Uh, the data quality should be like accurate and reliable to work with so that uh, the users like trust your solution and trust your calculations. Uh, the data coverage like must be able to like, cover the specific needs for specific cases. So it could be not only in terms of um, the coverage of like different uh, aspects of certain blockchain, but also like the like, chain coverage. So uh, the more coverage of chains there is, there's probably a bigger chance that the specific solution will be able to cover your needs. Uh, also, um, data integration. So it should be compatible with your systems and tools and the programming languages that you're working with. Uh, it shouldn't be uh, very expensive to uh, buy, maintain. Uh, you would probably want a uh, good support. Um, 
when you're building this. And uh, yeah, we're going to be coming back to uh, this a little bit later when I'm going to be giving uh, the specific uh, like groups that uh, we've identified. But anyway, let's leave it as it is for now. And uh, finally, of course, the legal compliance. All right, uh, moving to the next slide, common index as pipeline. So uh, basically platforms that work with blockchain data uh, have a similar ETA, ETL, I'm sorry. <laughs> And uh, the steps of the process are, so basically, firstly, node providers transmit the data to Indexer, then Indexer is handling your raw data, then it's performing the abstractions over raw data, because like uh, on the EVM example, the same EVM example, basically everything is stored in the bytecode and it's, um, so, and, and it's like uh, not trivial task to, uh, uh understand whether like specific contract is a uh, uh, urc 20 or like uh, an, an nft contract or something and uh, finally the serve date that, that that would be like many ways to do it whether it's uh, if it's an api then you're probably going to be serving row uh json hierarchies or something like that or if it's an analytical tool you're probably going to be serving with uh, different visualizations and stuff um, I'm going to be moving to the next slide, and uh, it's called "Why raw data is not enough." Um, so, yeah, blockchain first of all is technology, and its implementation can greatly vary depending on like global plot problem that a certain ecosystem is trying to solve. So, um, for instance, all business logic in Ethereum is mainly implemented through smart contracts. When, for example, in Polkadot, the implementation is done through pellets. Uh, yes, even dwelling on the same smart contracts and comparing, for example, Ethereum and smart contract. Firstly, uh, they're written in different programming languages. Solidity is used for Ethereum and Rust, C, C++ is used for Solana. Uh, and yeah, secondly, they implement like different approaches to storage. So uh, if you are uh, if you are trying to build a quite quite uh, high level DApp, uh, for instance, say NFT gallery. And you you want to like cover as as many chains as you basically can. It's gonna be pretty hard and not trivial for you to understand exactly how uh, NFT is implemented within every chain. So uh, that's why raw data is not enough. And uh, finally, the, the comparison slides. Uh, all right, so uh, we're distinguishing three. Um, three common solutions to help uh, the DApps developers to um, <laughs> work with on-chain data. I'm gonna be starting with Block Explorer. So Block Explorer is, uh, uh, the first one is, uh, I guess, uh, everybody like used to work with FSCAN when uh, not only when we're developing the solutions, but also in browsing. Just browsing the blockchain, basically trying maybe try to find some analytical analytics and like anything, <laughs> just to check the status of the transactions, maybe. And uh, it's quite easy to use, but uh, again, it uh, has some disadvantages. It's mostly focused mostly focused around raw data, and uh, uh, raw data may not be enough. And it's not customizable. It doesn't have that advanced search that uh, other um, solutions may give you and it's not really interactive um yeah let us move to our own sdk solution so you've probably heard before of the graph uh for instance if you've been trying to index the um evm data so uh it's an sdk uh it's a it have like very good uh, advanced search uh, capabilities. It's very customizable because uh, you and or your team is going to be the one who's going to be in charge of developing like all the logic, whether it's custom or like anything. Uh, but it's hard to set up and maintain because again, if uh, you're building a uh, solution that is that is built like on top of the custom. Uh, Custom user show SDK, then yeah, you, you're going to be the one who supported and set up. And eventually, uh, sometimes it's it's pricey because like somebody has to develop, migrate it, uh, and like keep it keep it um, updated. 
And finally, uh, we're going to a third party API database as a service solution. This is something that we're building at blockchain at a footprint. Um, so we're basically, uh, we're, what we're basically doing is, uh, yeah, we're, we're giving the indexes services. So something that you would do by yourself uh, using an SDK, for instance, coming back to the previous example. And uh, uh, so we're basically do the heavy lifting, all the heavy lifting that uh, like usually indexes do. So we're easy to use because we're providing different interfaces. This is something that, I was, that I'm gonna be mentioning a little bit later. Um, we are uh, good of, for advanced search. Again, something that I'm gonna be demoing a little bit later. We're scalable, uh, we're uh, reliable. Yeah, it, after all, soon we're gonna be having all our code base open sourced. So <laughs> you, you're gonna be able to validate the uh, ETL and all the code that we're building. So uh, that's great news, but of course, yeah, there are some disadvantages working with a, a third party data API. You're dependable on a, a third party. So you're not the one who is writing uh, your own custom logic. You're limited in customization for the same reasons. And sometimes it may be a little bit pricey. All right, so a um, little bit introduction of what exactly, a very high level introduction of how exactly Footprint works. Uh, there's on chain data. And there's an ETL uh, implemented within our indexes for different chains. Uh, the ETL implies the uh, just the collection of uh, raw data from blockchain and storing it to the uh, databases. Um, we split uh, and, and the core component of uh, every relational database is a table. And we split the tables into three layers, uh, bronze, silver, and gold. For the bronze level, uh, Let's just again take the EVM chains as a reference. Uh, only uh, row chain or row block data will be stored, such as um, transactions, blocks, locks, traces. Uh, have I forgotten anything? No, yeah, I think that's probably it. And uh, once it's there, it's consequently having a chance to move to a silver level. So, what do I mean by that? So, uh, let us come back to the older example of ERC20 uh, token. So ERC20 token is a smart contract, is just a smart contract that is having a specific set of functions that are uh, doing a certain thing. And that's the only way to understand whether the smart contract is a ERC20 type. And if we see that there is a transaction, um, executed from a smart contract that is of this ERC20 type, then we're placing um, this uh, transaction to the silver level in the different table, for instance, it's called token transfers. So you can see how this abstraction is going higher and higher. And finally, the gold, trans gold tables. The gold tables are uh, usually consisting the uh, business metrics. So for instance, uh, it could be different stats like uh, unique active addresses or um, for GameFi unique active users, um, market gap calculations, TVLs and stuff. And uh, at the end of the day, we're storing it in the um, in the uh, like same database and serve two kinds of interfaces. The first one is API. The second one is web app. API for developers, web app for analysts. But at the end of the day, it's working with the same app, with the same um, data set. So um, let me move to the next slide, please. And uh, um, we're very easy to use. So for API, we have uh, uh, two different kinds of APIs. First one is RESTful, the second one is SQL API. So I'm gonna be starting with the first one, it's quite trivial. We have selected the most uh, common scenarios to work with, for instance, NFT transfers, NFT attributes for NFTs, for DeFi, we got some 
uh, yeah, token transfers and yeah, you're basically like having a simple interface to that will co cover the common scenarios. Uh, it's very simple to integrate with because at the end of the day, it's still like using uh, HTTP protocol and it's nothing new for, for the developers, I would say. The SQL API is uh, much more flexible and much more interesting to work with. Um, because as I've previously said that um, API and the web app are using the same data set. That means that um, you can basically go on the website, you can create a chart, you can get the SQL for this chart and place it to the SQL API. And you will get like the same data, uh, but in the raw format. So it's a very good case for uh, most of developers who want to validate the data um, like in visual form before um, trying to um, do the specific integrations. So I'm going to be having a uh, quick demo <laughs> on our website. So I've already like done some um, preparation on my side and built a chart. So it's very simple actually to build a chart uh within our web application because we don't require the knowledge of sql but of course you can use sql in and it probably you should use sql in some cases when you really want to do a, a thorough analysis on some specific details so uh let me quickly go through a, a chart that i've built so uh, i've used the nft transactions table it's actually uh referencing something that i've been talking about before a silver level table uh, i'm taking all the transactions for past seven days and i'm counting how many of those were within each chain and i group it also by a day so at the end i received such a beautiful dynamic pie chart slash line graph chart that is uh yeah allowing me to like in visually comprehensive form to understand how it works uh, and as I said, our web app is SQL based. So basically, you can view the SQL for this code, uh, for this chart to be generated. And if you're familiar with SQL, here, here it is. Consequently, you're able to copy this code, go to our um, uh, API. By the way, here's a link to um, our API. And uh, uh, just query the same data. Uh, I'm not having the uh, API key set up, but uh, <laughs> you should trust me on this one. It would work. <laughs> All right, so that's about the SQL API. So we're trying to have a ecosystem uh, ecosystem vision on this. So uh, it's both API and the web app that are working together and uh, uh, completely compatible and uh, uh, yeah, it's recommended to be used together. So again, REST API, easy to use. Um, SQL API, very flexible. <laughs> that's, that's what it's important to keep in mind. All right, next slide, uh, scalability. So uh, it's not a secret that uh, every index is storing uh, hundreds of terabytes <laughs> of data. <laughs> And uh, um, it's uh, quite a vast amount to work with, actually, and uh, to query. So that's why we're having a sophisticated open source uh, data science stack working under the hood to uh, provide a great performance. And uh, um, yeah, generally good user experience, after all. Uh, so we're based on Trino and Apache. Oh, no, no, Apache, uh, Apache Iceberg, yeah. Um, and I don't want to get to the details in it, but yeah, this is this is the <laughs> the most sophisticated thing that uh, open source sophisticated thing that out there in the market. And finally, compatibility. Um, again, every API request is HTTP and uh, every programming language is friendly with sending the HTTP request. So uh, this isn't gonna be anything new on that part. 
And uh, um, as we already said, um, we're providing a seven days of API trial uh, if you're scanning this QR code. And uh, uh, yeah, really encourage you to play around with it. We've got a great community. We've got a, a great support team uh, handling different tasks in Discord. We're also accepting different feature requests in GitHub so that you're able to basically track the progress and be notified once the specific feature is uh, being released. Uh, and yeah, I really encourage you to join the community. All right, um, that's gonna be all from my side. I'm gonna be giving back word to Ali. Ali, thanks. Okay, <laughs> Maybe thanks. there are any questions? Yeah. Yeah, the questions will be at the end of the workshop. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for introducing Footprint Analytics. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay, guys. So now I will be discussing about how you can create a smart contract using Chain IDE. And if you have any questions, you can ask both of us, me and Boris, at the end of uh, this workshop. So I will be discussing about how you can create your first DApp using Chain IDE and analyze it using Footprint Analytics. So what we are gonna build today, I will be uh, creating an NFT smart contract and deploy on the Ethereum test network. And later after deployment, we will use Footprint Analytics to query uh, the smart contract we have deployed using SQL and then create some charts and see how footprint analytics work and how chain ID is used to create smart contracts. So these are the steps to deploy an ERC-720 smart contract and analyze using footprint analytics. First of all, we will need to install MetaMask to pay the transaction fee when we deploy a smart contract or when we make a transaction to the deployed smart contract. And the second one is we will write uh, down an ERC-721 smart contract. We wouldn't have much time to write down. So Chain ID has already prepared built-in templates. So we will use built-in templates and make some changes to the built-in template. The next step is compiling the smart contract and after compilation is done successfully, we will deploy on the Ethereum test network. Because if we deploy on the main net, we will have to pay some gas fee in a real ETH. So for this workshop, we will deploy on the Ethereum test network and then we will mint some NFTs and we will see how to verify the deployed smart contract. And in the end, uh, we will be using footprint analytics to play with the deployed smart contract. So first one is uh, MetaMask. I think most of the audience may already know MetaMask and how to install it. If you don't know, then you can like download from the Google Play Store, create an account and get some test net tokens using the uh, link given below. And after you have set up your MetaMask wallet, uh, you directly go to Chain ID, connect your MetaMask wallet, and uh, writing down, start writing down your smart contract. So ERC-720 smart contract is an NFT smart contract. And there are like two types of famous tokens, fungible and non-fungible. Uh, ERC-721 is for non-fungible tokens, and it has uh, the following uh, main functions. The first one is total supply. Uh, that will give the total number of NFTs in existence. And balance of will like check the number of NFTs being held by a specific user. For example, I will uh, give my address and the contract will tell me how many NFTs I am holding. Owner of will tell like who is the owner of this NFT token. Uh, transfer from is used to transfer an NFT from uh, one address to another address. Uh, the approved one is, uh, for example, if I wanna let anyone else uh, to 
transfer my NFT uh, to someone else on my behalf. So this approve function will be used. So these are all the functions in ERC 721 smart contract. We will check in the details when we move to chain IDE. So if you have the knowledge of solidity, then that is very good. But if you don't have the knowledge of solidity, then you don't need to worry. Chain ID has already prepared the built-in template. You don't need to change anything. And you can simply compile and deploy on the blockchain. So even if you don't have solidity knowledge, you can uh, follow this tutorial. So the first one is writing down smart contract. The second one is compiling deployment. And uh, after later is NFT minting uh, and flattener library will be used to verify the smart contract on the ether scan. And after it is deployed and verified, we will use footprint analytics. Footprint is currently using like 22 blockchains, including Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, and many more. And you can use SQL language to query directly from the like Ethereum blockchain, all the on-chain data you can uh, play with using SQL. Like those who are not good at uh, Solidity can use SQL to interact with the blockchain using footprint analytics. And the other thing is you can turn your results into graphs. You can like make your decision easily. And it, uh, it is supporting more than 26 types of charts. And you can share the charts with the community and can use the community's chart and can make some changes according to your requirements. So here is the uh, main page of the footprint analytics. And they already have built many charts and many like dashboards for different NFT collections for game ranking, marketplaces, chains, like for different purposes, like uh, how many transactions are being uh, occurred on like each chain as Boris showed already. And uh, yeah, here is the procedure, like after we deploy a smart contract on the blockchain, we go to new chart and we will submit the contract to footprint analytics and wait for the approval. After it gets approved, then we can use SQL and query uh, on the smart contract we have deployed. Yeah, here I have written like very small, uh, very simple SQL queries, like how you can use footprint analytics to get some uh, information about your smart contract. It's very simple, like select static from NFT info. Here they have tables, uh, NFT info. This stores all the information of NFTs. And here you can write down the NFT collection name, the one you wanna check and can set other other like limits, other checks uh, like this one. This one is uh, an other query, a very simple uh, for a simple, uh, for a specific contract address to check like the holders uh, of this NFT collection who, whose amount is like higher than 3.0. So uh, yeah, this one is to check uh, the average price of an NFT collection for some specific days. So we will uh, move to the tutorial. Yeah, here we will go to chain IDE. Yeah, here is chain ID. Chain ID. First of all, we will go to Chain ID and click Try Now button. Chain ID is a like uh, those who don't know about Chain ID. I would like to tell a brief introduction of Chain ID. is a cloud-based ID which supports uh, more than ten blockchains. Here you can see Ethereum, BNB Chain, Chain Thirty Three, Conflux, Polygon, and we have built-in templates. Those who are not like good at 
solidity, can use built-in templates, can learn from them, and can make some changes to them, uh, and can start Web3 journey. Here I will delete some small contract. Yeah, here is the ERC721 NFT standard token. So you can uh, check all the tutorial, like how you can compile it, deploy it, and make interaction to the deployed smart contract. Here you can check all, like first of all, you need to install MetaMask, then you need to have some um, test tokens. After that, you will deploy and need to pay for the transaction fee. So first of all, here is the smart contract. And here we will compile it. Here is the Solidity compiler version, like it should be greater than 0 0.8.1. And we have imported ERC721 smart contract here. After you compile it, you can check the code completely. Yeah, here we can check all the code for this smart contract. Here are all the functions I, I mentioned before, like transfer from, uh, like if we want to transfer an NFT from one address to an other address and uh, honor of to like check who's the owner of a specific NFT uh, using the, NFT token ID. Here we will use NFT token ID and it will return the owner wallet address. And here balance of like how many NFTs a specific uh, wallet holds. So it is uh, compiled successfully and now we will deploy it. Before deploying, you need to have a MetaMask. I already have installed the MetaMask and I have some test coins. Uh, here you can see. So I will connect my wallet to chain ID. Now it is connected and we will deploy our compiled smart contract. Here I have already compiled it and you can see all the compiled contracts under the compiled contract section. So here we will click the deploy button. Whenever we deploy a smart contract, we need to pay the gas fee or whenever we make a transaction to the deployed smart contract. So here we can see the status of deployment or compilation. If there are some errors, those also will be shown in output here, output section. So let's wait for the deployment. Once it is deployed successfully, all the functions will be shown here under the interact panel. It is giving some error by cash limit. So here, uh, I think maybe we need to change the gas fee for deploying. Here we can edit the gas fee too high and see if it is Sure. Oh, sorry, here we need to deploy the game item. Yeah, this one. So after it is successful, we can interact in the interact panel. All the functions of the smart contract will be shown under the interact panel. So here it is uploading and deploying. So it is deployed successfully. And here we can see all the functions for the smart contract. For example, balance of will, will tell us like how many NFTs are being held for a specific uh, wallet address. And here we can check the name of the, this NFT contract is game item. And uh, the next step is uh, upload our uh, NFT image to IPFS using NFT storage website. Here we have NFT storage dot uh, 
uh, NFT dot storage. So we will visit this website and log in to this website and upload the NFTs we want to uh, award or you can say mint. So here, uh, yeah, here I have already uploaded some. So here we will upload the image uh, NFT that we want to airdrop. Here is chain ID and we will upload to the NFT dot storage. So here it is uploaded. Yeah, here it is uploaded. And now we will use the CID. We will go to chain IDE and uh, create a new JSON file. We will use this, this information and create a JSON file. And paste this here. And uh, now we will copy the uh, CID for this image and paste here, yeah, for this one. Same. Yeah, and now we will download this one, chain IDE dot JSON, and upload this to the IPFS, uh, this NFT dot storage dot files. Yeah, here, now we will upload the one we downloaded here, chain IDE dot JSON. So we will upload this one and yeah, it is taking some time. Oh, I think not uploaded successfully. I will try again. Yeah, this one chain IDE dot JSON upload. Uh, yeah. We uploaded this one and copied this one. And here we changed the IPFS and then downloaded the chain ID.json and upload here chain ID.json one. Yeah, after it is uploaded successfully, we will use the IPFS and uh, we will use the approve function. Here we will use the token ID uh, as mentioned here. Yeah, we will use this one, this link, IPFS copy here. And we will use the CID for this one. And uh, we will use a contract uh, wallet address where we want to award this item. So we will use this function award item and address where we want to award this NFT and click the submit button. So now this NFT will be airdrop, yeah, will be awarded to this wallet address. We can check the transaction info here. Yeah, it's still in progress. Yeah, it is confirmed now. And now I can check like how many NFTs I hold here if I click. So it says I am holding one NFT. So if I want to award one more, then I can, yeah, award one more. I have uploaded some uh, images to this NFT dot storage before I will use that ones. So here I can use another one to award to my address. So whenever we store data on the blockchain, we need to pay some gas fee or whenever we make transaction. So here I, uh, yeah, it's waiting for the confirmation after it is successfully done. So I will check my balance again and it will show like I am holding two NFTs. Here we can see like I am holding two NFTs now. So award item is like to award an NFT to a specific address. 
So here I will use another address to award the NFP. Here this one. So now I will award to this address. So because IPFS is the same uh, address is. So now we have awarded three NFTs, two NFTs to one wallet address and one NFT to one NFT to another wallet address. So now we can check on the our collection uh, on the OpenSea also. Uh, here, if we go to OpenSea and we use our wallet address copy from here and we can see our collection. Yeah, here we have three items. So I have minted three, three items, two on my, uh, my wallet address and one on another wallet address. So here we can see game item, NFT collection and have three items. So here are the images not shown properly. I think there is some problem with the NFT dot storage. So I will try once again. Uh, we need to go to NFT dot storage, use some image that we want to give as an NFT here. So we will use today's poster. So upload here. Yeah, after uploading is successful here. After uploading is successful, I will copy the CID and go to chain ID, create a chain ID dot JSON file and paste the CID here. And then download the chain ID dot JSON file. After it is downloaded, I will upload to the NFT dot storage this one. So now I will use uh, it's yeah here. I will use the CID of this one. CID here. And uh, I will reward this NFT to another wallet address. So we need to pay uh, transaction fee again. So now we can go to OpenSea again and we can see like we will have four items now. Yeah, this one is still in progress, I think. Yeah, yeah. now we can see we have four items and uh, here four items and just three are shown. Maybe one is still updating. Yeah, here is the fourth one. Here we can see the uh, NFT on the OpenSea and is, uh, I think there was, an, there was a problem with NFT dot storage before. First of all, you need to upload an image, then it will provide you a CID. Then you know, need to go to chain IDE and create a JSON file given in the this uh, preview in the tutorial. Copy the JSON file from here and change the CID for according to the image you uploaded to the IP, uh, NFT dot storage. So then it will show here we can see and uh, yeah, here we can see the address of the holder owned by 0 0.6 is the address I 0 cross 0 06. And here we can see I uh, awarded to this wallet address. So the next step is like how we can get our uh, this smart contract verified on the ether scan. So to get it verified, we will have to create a flattened uh, file. Flattened file will collect all the smart contracts in one file, in one solidity file. So chain ID has provided a flattened library. Here we can see chain ID flattener library. We will activate it. After it gets activated, uh, we will use the file open in the editor panel the file we want to create a flattener file. Here we will click the flattener button and now the flattener file will be created. To store it, we will click the 
save button and in the X explorer panel we can see the flattened file here we can see the flattened file so the next step is to verify to get it verified before getting it verified a flattened file is necessary so here we will uh, here chain id provides a verifier plugin also uh, yeah yeah here we can see ether scan verifier chain id ether scan verifier you need to activate it and then it will be shown in the right section here you need to write down the ether scan api key for if you don't have the ether scan api key you need to click this button and you will go to ether scan and create an account and apply uh, apply for the ether scan api and you will get an api key very easily so here uh, we will choose the smart contract that we want to get verified and the contract address like we have deployed our smart contract uh, smart contract and we have got a deployed address here we can copy the uh, address for the smart contract we have deployed and we will go to verify section here paste the contract address and click the verify button so now it is pending in queue and it will get verified after some time yeah so now it is verified so before in the ether scan if we check our smart contract uh, it was not verified but if we check now it will be verified we go to ether scan and search our smart contract in the ether scan. Uh, sorry, we will uh, use a test network. Here is the main network we deploy on the uh, this one, this test network. So we will use this one and search again. So here we can see all the transactions we made to this ERC721 smart contract. The first one is like award item. I used award item function to uh, like uh, award NFTs to this, this wallet address. Here we can see all that. And here we can see the smart contract is verified now. So you can use the chain IDE, uh, this flattener library and chain ID ethers can verify to get your smart contract verified. So here, the, our smart contract is verified. Here is the name. Here is the creator, my wallet address. Here you can see uh, zero. Yeah, here is my wallet address. So I created this wallet and I am the creator of this wallet address. Here is the name. And here we can see all the transactions. Here we can see all the functions of our smart contract balance of, for example, if I want to check how many NFTs I hold, so I will just copy my address here and it will tell me how many NFTs I hold. Here I am holding two NFTs and I awarded some NFTs to another wallet address. So I will check that one. Yeah. Here this address also holds two NFTs. Here are all the like functions. Name is the game item, owner is this address. And if I want to check like who's the owner of uh, first NFT uh, using token IDE, so here it will provide me the wallet address. Here is the symbol like ITM is the symbol. So here are all the functions we have written down in our ERC721 smart contract. Here are all the transactions like award item I used uh, from which wallet address to uh, which wallet address. Here are all the transactions details. So this was like how we can create a smart contract using chain ID, like all the steps. First of all, like how we can write down a smart contract. The second one is how we compile a smart contract using the chain ID compiler here. After it is compiled successfully, it will provide us uh, the ABI and bytecode. And if we get any error, we can see in the here logger section. Here we got an error. We could, uh, yeah, here like we could see an error or warning. If you get any error, you can check here. 
and uh, fix the error and then try compiling again. Here we will deploy. After deployment, we can see all the functions of the deployed smart contract and can make interaction to the deployed smart contract. The next one is verification. For verification, we need Flatner library and Etherscan verifier. And we need Etherscan API key also. I have already generated API key. If you don't have, you will have to go to Etherscan API uh, to get an Etherscan API key by clicking here. Create an account if you don't have and get that is very easy. And here we will choose the comp uh, contract we want to compile and contract address. Oh, sorry. Here we will select among the compiled smart contracts the one we want to verify. And here we will use the contract address of the of this smart contract. So this was all regarding chain ID. Now we will move forward to footprint analytics. Like now I have deployed smart contract uh, uh, to the blockchain using chain ID. And I want to analyze my smart contract, like how many NFTs are being hold, held uh, by some specific users and how many like average price for one day, like how many NFTs were sold in like some specific days, something like that. So you will go to footprint analytics and they are supporting uh, about 22 blockchains, more than 26 charts types. Here we can see. And uh, here you can click the create button and here you can submit your smart contract. For example, I have deployed smart contract on the test network, and but you need to deploy on the main network. And here you need to provide the wallet address. After you provide the wallet address, all the information will be automatically extracted uh, by Footprint Analytics and you will be able to uh, interact with your smart contract using SQL and you can create some dashboards also and can use the community created dashboards also. Here I have created a very simple dashboard. For example, I have deployed the smart contract address and there are some transactions happened recently and I want to check the average price of my collection for some specific days. So here I will write down the SQL query. Here I have written, yeah, here is the SQL. Here is the SQL, for example, select uh, from this is the, uh, as from this wallet address. So I want to check the average price for some specific days for my collection. For example, now we have already deployed our smart contract and I want to check. Uh, we have deployed on the test net and nothing has been happened, like no transaction has been happened. No one has bought any NFT from that. So I used a different smart contract address, matrix world. So here I have written some queries, like here they have tables for each collection, like NFTs, NFT info, NFT transactions, if you want to check the NFT transactions data and uh, you can you want to check any of these like wallet, buyer addresses, block date, want to check any of these conditions, you can do it very easily using uh, SQL. So here is like after you run your query, you will get a table telling like uh, what was the average price for some specific days. And after you get a table, you can convert it into the chart. Here I have converted it into the chart. Yeah, here you can like make decision very e easily, like investment decisions, some research, uh, using footprint analytics. So that was all for today, like how to deploy a smart contract and analyze using, chain, uh, using 
footprint analytics. Uh, if you have any question, please feel free to ask us. Thank you uh, for being with us. And now it is uh, question answer session time. Yeah, I will see some question. Uh, what is the distinguish uh, of chain IDE and Remix? Is there a desktop uh, application for chain IDE or not? So these are questions regarding chain IDE. I will answer them and uh, I think I will, if there is any question regarding footprint analytics, I will tell you Boris. So what distinguish chain ID from Remix? So there are many advantages of chain ID as compared with Remix. We are supporting more than 10 blockchains and uh, we are like having built-in templates and you can store our, uh, like your smart contract on the cloud storage provided by chain IDE. And except that we provide uh, like uh, many other uh, functionalities also that Remix misses yet. And is there a desktop application for chain IDE? No, there is not a desktop based application for chain ID. We only provide a web uh, based application for chain IDE. So thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any other question, please feel free to let us know. I will still check if we have some questions. Yeah. Hi Boris, are you, are you still with us? Yes, sure. I was fascinated by your presentation. So many aspects <laughs> and features covered, man. There is, yeah. That was cool. Well, thank you. That was thank great. You. That was very thank educational. You. Can't wait to try it out, Chain ID. Thank you. Thank you. The whole specter of functionalities. Thank you. And we have some questions for you. All right. What is the difference between footprint? footprint and there is another tool called Dune. What is the difference and like, how do you, like is, is that a competitor or how do you define it? Yeah, um, the biggest difference between footprint and uh, Dune is I guess um, in the uh, query construction uh user experience because and the, we don't require you to know any um or have any like technical prerequisites to work with our platform you don't have to learn any programming languages you don't even have to learn um sql because you can create charts using a drag and drop interface again this drag and drop interface is an abstraction of a sql but still at the end of the day you don't have to use it and uh being in at, at that position where basically I think we found the balance between like easiness of use, which uh, is uh, provided for but by, by, by some like great products such as Nansen for NFT analytics that may be uh, NFT free go okay. and uh, as well as flexibility using our uh, drag and drop creation tools and SQL for specific cases. So yeah. whether uh, yeah yeah as I personal uh, like personally observed, uh, footprint analytics will allow to convert SQL to tables and tables to SQL, but I think that is missing in Dune. I uh, what do you say about it? You know better. Wow, that's actually one of the latest features that we should yeah. Uh, I think this is a great feature that uh, we're going to be bringing it. And um, again, um, blockchain data is is not the simplest, uh, <laughs> not yeah. the simplest uh, source of data to work with, especially like with a variety of different blockchains. And it's very important to provide a simple to use ETL processes, for instance, that without any programming language, you you will consequently like uh, in the short term, be able to create any table that you want. So, uh, and uh, the, we're, we're going to be pioneering this feature in this space. And yeah, we're so excited about it. 
Okay, and I checked like you need to submit your smart contract and it will take some some days for the verification for rejection or approval. So would you tell me like what is the criteria for that for rejection or approval? Like what should uh, consider by the users who want to submit the smart contract? Uh, we're using the trivial mechanisms that um, FSCAN is using. So nothing special actually. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the short answer. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> okay, thank you. And we have uh, other questions. Actually, there are many questions today. So the right, other cool. one is like, are there any plans for footprint analytics to do something like investment counseling? Counseling, like, does footprint analytics have some plans to do some something like investment counseling? Yeah, I don't think that we really have this uh, track of work right now, because at the end of the day, what's important to understand that footprint is a tool to make the analysis that could be used by different companies who will in turn will probably be uh, doing some yeah. doing some investment counseling or anything. But this is definitely something that you can do. So yeah, just recently using our API, we integrated a huge model for uh, the CRM system of our uh, like quite a big GameFi partner, and uh, uh, like there, the uh, investment counseling or some like data insight that will give uh, a possibility for the whole company to make the deci data driven decisions is implemented. So again, at the end of the day, footprint is a tool, so no direct investment counseling from our side. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, that it would be very risky. And uh, I think, yeah, Footprint Analytics is the, maybe the only one who is supporting more than 20 blockchains, like 22, right? I think it's 23 now. <laughs> oh, 23 now. Yeah, there is no other, I think, analytic tool who is supporting that many blockchains. So you people are doing really a great job. Thanks a lot. <laughs> My pleasure. And we have some questions for Chain ID. I will be answering that. So the question is, are there any plans for you guys to open public classes in schools? Yeah, we are always eager to teach like uh, to anyone, anywhere. We have been teaching in universities in China and have been holding hackathons, seminars, webinars in Africa in Turkey. Uh, recently, we have done in Dubai also. So if you are like asking for some specific re uh, region, you can contact with us and we will be happy to arrange some classes for the specific location. So the other question is, are there any plans in 2023? Yes, there are many plans in 2023 for Chain IDE. We plan to launch Chain ID Education uh, website now, and uh, that will be giving NFTs and there will be some tasks. There is um, much to come, come in like in coming months. Uh, we will be releasing more information about our plans. Uh, in 2023. Yeah, I think these are all the questions for today. I will check again. So the other question is like, what are the like use cases? One is investment and what are like some other cases, use cases? Or is this is a question for you? Well, um, I mean, like, yeah, honestly, anything. So, um... <laughs> One, 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 one use case is to remove the noise from social media that is filled with different strange posts sometimes. And uh, I think it's very important to try to, I mean, do the fact checking first using the analytical tools that are simple to use and make the posts fulfill with different data decision, uh, data, data insights so that different people can make data-driven decisions. 
Uh, <laughs> but that's a personal pain point. So too many noise in social media. That's why I'm saying about it. Uh, again, uh, second use case, investments. Uh, third use case, trading. Uh, if you are, um, yeah, if you are a developer, uh, it's like you can use the services of the indexer to get the data that you want because the historical data, so so that you don't have to deal with uh, um, hard blockchain queries. So I guess those are like the most common one. Yeah, hopefully I gave enough examples. <laughs> Yeah, these were all the questions, and uh, thank you so much, Boris, for the for being with us today and for your presentation and for the tools. I personally, <laughs> yeah, enjoyed uh, using footprint analytics. I haven't used like SQL for a long time, so couldn't done like much, but <laughs> but it is really interesting. Thank you, and uh, we don't have any more questions and for the audience i would like to remind again we have uh, special incentives for the, all the audience who joined us today there is a link in the video you can click on that and can get a seven day free trial version for the footprint analytics thank you all for being with us thank you boris to you that was a pleasure to hear your presentation it's so fulfilled with technical details i love it yeah same here same thanks here. a lot once again thanks have a nice uh, bye bye everyone